My name is Jerry uh, DeLavis. I live in Rochester, New Hampshire. And uh, actually, I'm the organizer of the Rochester 912 Project, uh, which is a, uh, uh, a socially and uh, politically conservative uh, group, a uh, good group of people. Uh, we've, uh, we've been meeting for five years. Uh, we actually got the idea to start the, the group off of, uh, off of from Glenn Beck. And uh, I've been conservative. I've been concerned about our, our overreach of our government for 20 or 30 years. I've been warning uh, almost everyone I talked to that this day was coming and uh, that uh, they were going to spend us into bankruptcy and that they were uh, uh, actually behaving in a lawless fashion. Well, I got a lot of respect for Jerry. Um, I've never really been uh, religious in my life at all. When I met Jerry about a year and a half ago, I had questions regarding God, and you know, and, and I've never actually uh, never never talked to anybody that ever mentioned God in any form or fashion that uh, that I felt um, that I believed. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I trust Jerry. I trust Jerry a lot, and uh, you know, he's led me to God in some ways. You know, not as much as I'm sure he'd like to have seen, but. Something's better than nothing in that aspect, and, and I believe more now than I ever have in my life. Uh, I truly believe that God has had His hand in this entire thing because uh, it's really dangerous out here right now. You know, yeah. um, I know what we're facing. I know what they're facing, and, uh, and we're all very clear on that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, Clive's sister, the third to the youngest, his favorite sister, <laughs> the one that used to go riding with him on the Mesa, and then he made me uh, oatmeal. I never liked oatmeal, and he made it when we got home. I was so hungry, and I actually ate it. <laughs> I remember that story real well. Um, raised, um, born and raised here on the ranch. Uh, run these foothills, swam in the ditch, swam in the river every day of my life. Rode a big white horse named Bluch. Um, he was the best cow horse my dad had, and but then he was the best kid horse. And I was on him every day. Um, loved him. Um, this is this is my life. We're just uh, a bunch of patriots who have come from for myself, we, we drove 41 hours, 2,700 miles to get here to, to aid the Bundy family and, their, and the plight that there has been laid upon them by our federal government. I guess my story with, with Clive is, it goes back like 25 years of as a family with Lynette. My father-in-law father is deceased, but Clive and him were best friends. They grew up together. And I remember the day that he was in the hospital, Clive had showed up. I'm outside talking to everybody, Aunt Margaret, I guess Aunt Margaret, and everybody was there. I guess Larry leaned over, and I heard out the door, will you raise my kids when I pass? And I was like, what's going on here? Clive, and to that day, Clive has taken my wife and all of his kids and, brought, brought, and raised them as his own, which is crazy because my kids never knew their real grandparents, but they always called Clive and Carol their grandma and grandpa. That's all they know. They don't, I want to ride on track with grandpa. I want to go on track with grandpa. And he, Come on, sis, get up in here, you take a proud nip. You know, we're gonna plow some hay, or we're gonna go pound some melons, or we're gonna go round up some cattle. This is one family that is just cohesive together. We're all bound like glue here. I mean, it's just, you never seen a family like this at all, ever. I mean, there's more love in this family than you can find probably around all the United States. And it's just been a pleasure being in this family. Children in there and, and, and children in there, great grandchildren, probably. I imagine there's some great grandchildren in there. I mean, there's so darn many kids running around there. It's like a nursery, and, and they're all lovely. It's a lovely family. And uh, 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 and I, we just want to try to preserve America. And they are America, truly, they are America. And this is what we do. I know the Bundys. <laughs> I'm East Coast, I'm White Mountain Man, you know, I'm not from the desert. I like it here. But, uh... These people are true blue Americans, you know. They uh, they settled this place and 
and the whole situation's bullshit. And, uh, and if we hadn't come out here, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that they'd already be dead. What are you doing with the backhoes? That's all we want to know. What are you doing with the backhoes? That's all we want to know, dude. You know, I've told the story a hundred times, but, you know, we just at the rally, just talking and, and visiting, and, uh, you know, there'd been a few BLM trucks come by and whatever, but nothing major. And then we seen, noticed up on the, the mountain, these train of BLM trucks coming down. So we got, you know, spotted them, seeing there was 14 to 15 vehicles. Um, noticed that they had a dump truck and a backhoe and all of us were just like why would they have a dump truck and why would they have a backhoe and why would they need 14 vehicles to pick, pick this and so we all thought at that time that they were up there shooting cows and burying them that's what we said we need to find out what's in there what they're doing What, what we're seeing here is the corral system where they, they were holding the impound of cattle. Prior to the sheriff's order of release, these were all set up and this is where the cattle were being held. And just out of respect to someone else's private property, obviously, we didn't destroy this, but they just laid these, these corral, they just laid this corral system down after the cattle were released. As of yet, they, you can see they still haven't came to claim, claim their property, but I imagine they will. So. We've lost so much, and that's why it's so important to me that you know we don't lose anymore. And I feel that you know if nobody came out here and made a stand, not only would these people's lives be lost and their land be stolen, but they'd be coming to my house next, in your house. Nobody makes a stand to help you, you know. As I, I forget who who said this old saying, and I'm probably not even going to get it right, but you'll get the gist of it. But it's like, oh, when they came for the uh, when they came for the Christians, you know, I'm not a Christian, so I didn't stand up. And, when it came for the Constitutionalists, I don't really know anything about law, so I didn't stand up. When it came for the gun owners, I don't even own guns, I don't like guns. I didn't stand up. Then when it came for me, there was nobody left to stand up, and they got me too. Because I did not come here to fight. Yeah. I came here to politically fight. I didn't come here to physically fight, but I'm, I'm prepared to do either if, if necessary. Because ultimately, you got three people in a room, <laughs> And you got 97 people saying, oh, and those three people, they're, they're bullies. Yeah. And they've got really big guns, right? And everybody's afraid of getting shot by the really big gun. But if you look at it this way, you know, uh, we all rush them. Yeah, they're going to get a couple of us. But we got to make that stand, right? And the first people who make the stand, yeah, then we're going to get mowed down. But what that's going to do is it's going to cause everybody else to stand up too. Yeah. And by the end of the day, we're going to have the run back. So I say, get behind me, you know? Uh, I'll go first. And I don't want one of these guys getting hurt. Yeah. And uh, they got families that are doing without their husbands and their fathers. And, uh, and, and there's some young ones too. You know, I'm older, my kids are all grown. I got five kids and a bunch of grandkids. And. Uh, but uh, if we don't stand determined and willing to give our all, uh, our children won't have a future anyways because they'll be living under a dictatorship. Our, our, our intention here is to protect the Bundys from, from an illegal assault by the federal government if they come in shooting at the, at, at the Bundys or, uh, or go, come, come in here meaning to do them harm, is uh, we'll defend the Bundys.
and uh, and if, if we all get sacrificed in that in that uh, in that uh, so be it stand up stand up have your voice be counted don't silence is compliance you know you gotta you gotta be proactive in, in ensuring your liberty because 20 guys can't do it for you it's a big country there's a lot of people out there that be responsible for yourself remember be responsible for yourself don't point the finger get up off your ass